Hello everyone and welcome to Corporate Tech College Learning Beyond Borders podcast with me Aishwarya Ravi Shankar. For some of you who might know me, I work as a marketing lead for Computech College and for those who do not know me, hi, this is Aishwarya. So welcome to Computech College podcast. In September, we have been having a series of podcasts by the team chat with the leadership team at Computech. So in this episode, I have a very interesting personality with me sitting right next to me and I would like to introduce Computer College HR Manager to all of you. Let's meet Mata Golzari. How are you, Mata? Thank you very much, Aishwarya. I'm doing well. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. You look beautiful, all dressed oh, up. Thank you I very really much. like your hairstyle <laughs> and the bow that you have. Oh, thank you very much. That's so nice of you. Yeah. You look great too. Thank you so much. <laughs> So uh, I'd like to give a little bit of introduction about Mata. So as you know, she's our HR manager. So Mata is a very interesting personality. She's always energetic and smiling. And you know, the kind of smile and positivity she has, we all love that. Right, Mata? Thank you very much. That's a compliment. So we all are immigrants from some of the other country, right? So I'm from India. You tell me which country you are from. I'm from Iran. Iran? Okay, that's nice. Um, so do you, do you miss Iran? Uh, well, of course, I do miss Iran because uh, my family is living there and you know, being separated from your loved ones is a little bit difficult. So when you talk, uh, talk about your home country, it's the place where your childhood mm -hmm. was, was spent and all those uh, memories associated with your childhood with a sense of nostalgia. Uh, can sometimes be uh, kind of like um, making you emotional but I would say of course so uh, Iran is the country where I was born mm -hmm. and I grew up with my family I had lots of activities over there achievements success I mean I, I, I would never forget the days that I attended the school or the university and apart from that i also miss my country's culture mm -hmm. lots of events we had at iran and i yeah i miss all of these but my number one uh like missing uh, would be my family members family. yeah i totally agree same with me here um so i i miss, certainly miss india the culture the food the people but it's it's the major thing for me is my family and friends Right. Of I course. think it's, it's the same for most of us. Of right? course. Yeah. So when did you come to Canada? Mata? Uh, well, I came to Canada in 2018 as a tourist mm -hmm. because kind of I have a passion for travel and I love to see Canada as well. I came to Canada in 2018. I was here for September, October, November. And then while I when I back when I was back uh, to my country, I was just deciding about immigrating to Canada mm -hmm. and I decided to be a student here mm -hmm. and I came back as a student in 2019. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's interesting. So you came as a tourist, you went back and then you came as a student and then now yes. you're working with Computech as a HR manager, which is yes, great. Yes, of course. So what made you choose Canada, if I may ask? Uh, of course, yeah. So when I came to Canada as a tourist, so I was uh, amazed by the stunning landscape and natural beauty. Uh, so it is well known for its lakes, forests, ocean line, and as well as the coastline. Mm -hmm. So I was really impressed by the natural beauty of Canada, which I'm sure that most of the immigrants are uh, immigrants' uh, attention is drawn to this. Um, next, I would say um, what I loved really in Canada is diversity and inclusion. Mm -hmm. So I see that Canada is a uh, multicultural uh, society mm -hmm. and has a welcoming attitude towards the immigrants from around right. the world and it has always policies in place in order to promote inclusivity as mm -hmm. well as the, uh, diversity and this was really uh, kind of like drawing my attention to Canada Last but not least, I would say um, the economy. Mm -hmm. uh, this country has uh, a strong and a stable, a strong and a stable economy, and um, it is really uh, uh, has offers numerous job opportunities to uh, different uh, skilled workers and professionals from around the world, and welcomes them. Uh, so these uh, factors really uh, made me 
uh, I mean, uh, helped me make that decision that, yeah, Canada would be a safe country as well as a country with a high standard of living. Yeah, yeah, I think, uh, you know, you mentioned it all right and well. Um, so this is the most, uh, the, you know, the understanding or the perspective of most immigrants, um, right? Because Correct. most of us are immigrants in, here in Canada and they think, you know, Canada is a safe country, the economy is stable, a lot of opportunities to uh, for your career and then to grow. So I, I totally agree. And we all came with the high hopes. So I think, uh, you know, Canada is treating us all well so far. <laughs> Okay, let's talk about work, Martha. Um, so how long have you been working in the HR industry and uh, is this something that you like the most? Uh, yes, of course. So I like being, um, I mean, being in the HR world and working um, as an HR. So I've been having international experience for a few years before I come to Canada and that's why I decided to uh, do HR here at Canada, in Canada and just pursue my career in the HR field. And uh, so here in Canada, I have roughly three to four years of experience, but okay. back home I had a few years of experience as well. Yeah, that's pretty good. I could see that you have a lot of experience you know that reflects well in the way that you work here uh, so uh, how did you came to know about computer I'm pretty sure that this is the question you know that you ask others now it's my turn to ask you how did you came to know about computer where did you see and how did you apply for this role of course so I came across Computec at a job posting platform mm -hmm. and did a little bit of research about the company as well as the programs that they offered uh so because uh during my like career experience because i have been experiencing work um in mostly educational institutions so it draw my attention mm -hmm. oh this is a post-secondary institution and i would love to be a member of their team mm -hmm. Um, this actually happened when i was invited to the interview and it was at that time that i noticed Computec is not just simply a workplace or a company that I would say, okay, I'm just employed at Computec. It's just a second home for me because uh, you feel uh, kind of like that support and welcoming attitude from everybody at this company and you don't feel like you go to work and you feel like this is the second home for exactly. you. And that is why um, I'm just... Uh, what is that? I'm just interested in working in this organization. Right. right. I totally agree, Martha. I think it's it's the same feeling for most of us here that we all feel Confidec is a family. It's, it's at least our second family to all of us, right? So everybody is so friendly, so supportive, and everybody is knowledgeable and plenty of talent and uh, whatnot, right? Exactly. So let's, let's talk about HR industry more in detail since you mentioned this is something that you've been doing for long okay. and you're interested in. So what do you think are the top three things that you like the most about being in HR? Yeah, so what I like uh, mostly about HR is helping others. Mm -hmm. So I have the opportunity as an HR to help our employees with different aspects of uh, like their work lives and such as helping them, uh, supporting them while they have challenging times or helping them with their professional development. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing I really love about um, HR is that um, the variety of responsibilities mm -hmm. so oh, yeah. uh, especially here at Computec I have various responsibilities including new hire onboarding employee relations training and development performance management lots of other things that and creating policies as well um, that this variety makes this role really interesting for me as well as dynamic mm -hmm. last but not least I would say the strategic impact so as all of us know um, HR has generally a crucial role in uh, um, having a strategic impact on the development of the organization mm -hmm. And so I'm glad that I have this opportunity at Computer College in terms of like aligning HR practices mm -hmm. 
uh, with um, the overall company's goals and objectives. Mm-hmm. I think that sounds interesting. Now you made me think like, should I switch to HR? <laughs> 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 this is so interesting, you know, building relationship with people, employee engagement, training, uh, onboarding and s- much more. And as you rightly mentioned, HR team plays a crucial role in the strategic uh, you know, development of any organization. So kudos you to you and your team that you, you guys have been doing Thank a fantastic you. job. Um, so you mentioned about the top three interesting things. Now let's talk about the challenges. Do you have any challenges, like uh, not, not specifically for your role, but in the industry? Uh, like for example, imagine someone who wants to switch to HR or in HR industry, but want to progress, right? Like of what course. do you see are the challenges that are some, you know, um, the barriers that they need to break break, and then, you know, break through and climb up? Yeah, of course. So like every other role, of course, HR has some challenges uh, in, in the industry as well as at workplace as well. So um, I'm going to talk about mostly our workplace. So one of the uh, constant, constant concerns for HR is maintaining the uh, work environments, health and safety, addressing the safety issues as well as uh, developing emergency response plans as well as uh, let's say promoting employees wellness. Mm -hmm. So I would say this is the number one concern Mm -hmm. for HR. Mm -hmm. Apart from that, I could mention about um, change management, Mm -hmm. I would say. So say for example, in the time of the organization's restructuring or new technology adoption, Mm -hmm. HR should be uh, what is that? Uh, should be uh, careful uh, in order to uh, conscious, about the yeah. right about the strategies mm-hmm. that they are making because of uh, a smooth transition mm-hmm. of this adoption among the employees. Because employees sometimes may resist to these right. changes, and HR with creating a specific mm-hmm. strategies and helpful strategies can. Uh, can help and make our employ mm-hmm. you know, the employees um, accept the changes mm-hmm. and implement it in the organization. And apart from these, I would say so training and development would be uh, some kind of like challenge for HR because um, as an HR, I would feel that uh, I should be constantly identifying the training mm-hmm. needs, designing effective training programs for everybody and making sure that every individual employee in the company has the opportunity to learn new skills right. and foster professional development mm-hmm. in the company. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I think yeah, uh, you covered most of the things. That's that's really interesting, Mata. So if someone that's watching the podcast who might be having this question, you know, how do I get into HR industry? Um, you know, how demanding it is in in Canada. Like, uh, I'm pretty sure that every company needs a HR, right? Be it, be it any industry and any company. Uh, but uh, uh, people who are watching the podcast might have the question like, how demanding it is? How do I get into this industry? What are the skills that I need to equip with? So do you have any any insights on that? Of course. So I would say, yeah, having the knowledge of everything is one part of the story and being able to develop those certain skills in yourself in order to cope with the challenges of the role is definitely requires um, experience and effort. Mm -hmm. So uh, one of the mm, most important skills is, I would say, communication skills. So it's strong communication skills and being able to interact with uh, different levels of management, employees, and the rest of the team is really um, important for um, this role. Mm -hmm. And I would say leadership comes next because um, in the field of HR, um, there needs to be strong leadership skills, time management skills, uh, and HR should be able to set priorities as well as deadlines and also lead the HR team um, in terms of like um, the projects or make, say, f- say for example, make them motivated, mm-hmm. engage them in the, in the field. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, in their kind of like the activities that they're doing Mm-hmm. Apart from this, interpersonal skills is really of great importance for the HR field 
and uh, building kind of like positive relationships with everybody else and being an approachable person being empathetic is really important so that any employee say for example they're facing any kind of challenges could approach you and ask for your assistance um apart from this so the last one i would like to mention is not kind of a skill but it's just something that is really important in the field of hr mm -hmm. such as uh, being uh, sensitive to uh, i mean uh, being aligned with confidentiality and just having that ethical approach to that mm -hmm. as you know hr always handles sensitive information right. of the employees so uh, somebody being in this role, they must be 100% aligned with confidentiality, how to handle and maintain mm -hmm. um, this information. Mm -hmm. This is very important, I believe, in this role. Yeah, I, I totally, uh, you know, 100% agree with the confidentiality part. Uh, you know, um, I noticed this, like, there are some people who are, uh, uh, like, they cannot maintain secrets, right? Uh, but they are good with other skills like communication, interpersonal leadership and other things. But maintaining the confidentiality is something that's, you know, a little bit, you know, tricky or challenging sometimes because in the work environment, which is, you know, friendly, like, for example, in Computech, uh, if, if someone approaches us and asks for some information, uh, uh, they are approaching us in a friendly manner. But then we being in the HR, we have to be really careful and conscious about exactly what we speak right so how do you how do you you know manage that how how difficult or how easy for uh, that is for you well um same time that i'm managing confidentiality i try not to be rude to people yeah. so um first of all experience i would say mm -hmm. would help you uh most about the handling mm -hmm. this information as well as second would be the personality mm -hmm. which is really important so uh, some people tend to have kind of like a what is that so talking too much mm -hmm. disclosing too much secrets right. or gossiping uh, kind of like attitude mm -hmm. or personality so this could be uh, this needs to be addressed mm -hmm. if somebody wants to be in the HR field mm -hmm. And uh, for me, in my role, I try to uh, keep my distance mm -hmm. with employees, the management level, and everybody in terms of like keeping those confidential in, uh, mm -hmm. information as well as being really supportive, empathetic, mm -hmm. and friendly towards um, our employees here. Right. So distinguishing between these two could be sometimes challenging, but um, end of the day, you need to manage it, yeah. right? Yeah, <laughs> I think uh, you you rightly mentioned it, Mata. You know, it comes with experience. You know, uh, at the same time when you're disclosing, not disclosing something, you know how to not be rude on on someone because being a HR that's very important, right? The employee relationship. You have to be friendly at the same time. You have to avoid certain things from disclosing. At the same time, you have to set boundaries. At the same time, like it's it's so much. <laughs> I think it's the you know it comes out of practice and with experience. Exactly. Right? Well, and one of the skills that you also mentioned is communication skills and interpersonal skills, right? So we uh, as as we already discussed earlier in the podcast, we all are from you know different countries and then the the kind of English that we speak is different we have a different accent like for example Correct. me I have a little bit of English accent and I'm leaning towards the Canadian accent I don't know I don't know the audience have to tell <laughs> <laughs> I'm not there fully yet so I'm in between um, same with you and same with you know many other people so how how do you think people can improve their communication skills it's not only about the accent I mean j let's just forget the accent part it's about how effectively you know you convey the message like I'm talking and you're able to understand that and you're talking I'm able to understand that really well so how can this communication be in an effect done in an effective way uh, yes of course so by communication first of all um, yeah you said let's not talk about the accent I definitely agree with you because I would say Canada's 90% population is just uh, from different uh, countries of the world. Definitely no one is, not everyone is a native speaker, let's say this way. And um, 
by effective communication so in terms of you mean english speaking communication if that is what you mean i would say studying and education is really effective mm -hmm. because here all of our professors like in colleges or universities are most of them like mm -hmm. they have great communication skills and that would be effective mm -hmm. Um, but by effective communication, really, here's the difference. So what I'm saying is that uh, being an active listener, what I'm understanding of this is that being an active listener as well as conveying your information clearly mm -hmm. is enough to say that I have good communication skills. Absolutely. So when the person you are just speaking has the potential to understand what you mean, mm -hmm. this is the most important part, I would say. By communication skills, I, we don't mean somebody having a native speaking accent or say, for example, speaking English so fast that right. you don't understand some of the words. But if that person is conveying and communicating the information that they want to you to know as right. uh, the addressee, they, they communicate this information clearly and right. they are an active listener to you, then definitely there is an effective communication happening. Definitely, Mata. I totally agree with you 100%. I think we both are on the same page regarding the communication part. But I just want to bring this up uh, for those of the viewers that are watching because, uh, you know, some students have had this uh, questions in the past that how can I improve my communication? How can I effectively communicate? I'm from a non-English speaking country and now I'm here in Canada where English is the one of the official languages. Um, so how can I improve? So, you know, um, there are tons of opportunities here in Canada but uh, the, there are certain barriers that stop students from you know taking up the opportunity and one such barrier I see is the language barrier right I'm Correct. not good with English people cannot understand me or I don't have an accent you know people people think that as a problem but it, it's not right that that's what I want to bring this up and thank you so much for answering that Martha no worries. Um, so um, since we are here in this podcast with the team chat with the leadership team um, so I want to uh, understand what's what's the motivation factor that's uh, you know that's uh, making you run because um, uh, at the end of the day you know there should be some factor that's motivating all of us to to lead our life to work to maintain a work-life balance you know there should be some kind of motivation so what's yours of course so for me number one motivator is altruism and helping people so when I understand that I am having kind of like a positive impact on people's lives, um, that is a kind of motivator for me as well as, um, yeah, a powerful motivator for me as well as, let's say, uh, personal growth and development. Mm -hmm. This is another uh, like drive for this personal growth and uh, development as well as self-improvement constantly motivates me in order to learn new skills and um, expand my knowledge. Mm -hmm. Last but not least, I would say achievement and success. I'm always driven by achieving goals and experiencing success of the goals that I've achieved. And I right. have set those goals in order right. <laughs> like to achieve in some uh, specific timelines. These right. are all the motivators for me. Right. That's amazing. Yeah, Mata. So um, I have asked this question to others in the podcast uh, with the same theme right uh, chat with the leadership team so i've asked this question to tj to murali and chick i was asking them how important is education um, you know i i know education is very important for all of us but um, you know do we always have to be a, a top top person in the education you know scoring high marks um, you know uh, you know being the lead and everything is that something that we talk about you know uh, uh, being a successful in the education or is it about effectively understanding the things i don't care about the scores or the grades but i understood the concept perfectly i i know what's going on i know the subject so what do you think so absolutely i do agree with you so by having the education and getting benefit of that education it doesn't mean that you only get the high grades or high scores or be the number one i don't know among a, a in a class so understanding the concept and being able to use what you've learned in the real world mm -hmm. really makes sense mm -hmm. so i would say 
it is not just a matter of getting those scores or passing the courses it's just when in the future you you benefit from that education it gives you a vast vision of the society and uh, the industry in the field of the industry that you're going to be um, employed at uh, so yeah understanding the concepts are very in, is very important is far very important than um, just being uh, you know it's stuck to the marks and its scores right. and everything right right exactly I, I agree with that as well Amata so do you have any message for our listeners who are actively watching and listening to us on this podcast Oh yeah, of course. Well, uh, my message for the day would be that believe in yourself and your limitless potential. I believe that life is a journey uh, with lots of challenges and opportunities and with each step you grow stronger and wiser. I think that's a short (laughs) and sweet message, but very effective. Uh, but I would really like to continue this podcast because considering the time, I really don't want to take too much of your time. Right? Me either. Yeah, but I really appreciate, I sincerely appreciate your time and efforts uh, behind the scenes and at the real <laughs> podcast as well. So thank you so much, Mata, for being here with me and chatting uh, with me. Uh, you know, we had a chance to explore a little bit of your personal life, your professional journey and your message for all the students. So thank you so much for doing this. Thank you very much, Aishwarya, too. I really enjoyed this, having this uh, friendly chat with you. And you never feel that, oh, you're sitting in a formal kind of like <laughs> video recording or something. Yes. So your uh, uh, supportive personality as well as your smiling face just forgets about uh, <laughs> every kind of like tension and distress right. that you might have in the real world. Yes. And it was a really fun time for me sitting here with you thank you very much thank for this. you so much Mata. i really uh, you know i'm happy by the way that you also enjoy because as a host it's my you know responsibility to keep my guest happy and i could see your face happy which Absolutely. means i did a good job yes <laughs> thank you very much i thank appreciate you. it thank you so much Mata. so if you like this podcast make sure you like share and subscribe that way you show us your support which will encourage us and motivate us to record more such interesting videos like this one stay tuned until i meet you next time it's aishwarya and mata signing off from learning beyond borders podcast see you see you